Will the gentleman and with yield? that, I will yield the balance of my time to my ranking member. Ms. Brown, thank you so much. You know, you started off by saying something pretty profound, which is we are here instead of doing the business of the American people because the Republicans have offered us no positive agenda in their year in office. We know we've wasted countless weeks in them just trying to pick a speaker. Um, and uh, we've wasted countless weeks with their inertia and their do-nothing policies. Um, but Ms. Brown, um, I don't know if you recall, I just don't want people having to take your word for it. I think numerous Republicans have gotten up on the floor of the House complaining about the fact that they have no agenda. I think our colleague Chip Roy <clears throat> from Texas said that the Republicans have not given him one thing, a single thing, I remember him saying, to campaign on. Um, so I just want to ask you, when you're saying that they have no agenda, that's not a partisan point. You're getting that from Republicans, aren't you? That is correct. One of, the, uh, one of our colleagues said that uh, there was Trump derangement syndrome. And of course, Trump derangement begins with Donald Trump himself. He thinks he has a legal right to assassinate US citizens. Um, he thinks he can grab women by their genitals, although that's not the word that he used. Uh, he's, he said that if Joe Biden is reelected president, there will be World War II. Um, he is obviously deranged and disoriented, but the real Trump derangement syndrome that I see is those people who cannot break from Donald Trump after he's proven himself to be completely and totally unworthy of your support. Because I'm looking at talented, gifted people on the other side of the aisle, the ones who have not left Congress in frustration or because they've broken with Donald Trump and clashed with him. But I'm still looking at people who have their wits about them, I think, but you're acting like cult members, like you're sleeping on the basement of a cult, listening to tapes all night. And I beg you to get over your Trump derangement syndrome. Thank you very much for yielding, Ms. Brown. Chair recognize Mr. Donalds from Florida for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A, a couple of things. First, it was said in this hearing, uh, Mr. Chairman, about you specifically, that you repeatedly said you would give uh, Mr. Biden any opportunity, he could choose which one, to come and speak in front of this committee. He could do it by deposition, he could do it by open hearing. It was up to him. The truth of the matter, though, is, members, is that the chairman's words are not binding. Like, no other member's words of Congress are really not binding. The binding article. Point of order. Does the chairman agree not, with that? Point of order. Does the chairman agree? Are you going to restore my time? Point of order. Just point of order. Okay. Does the chairman agree that the chairman's words are not binding on the committee? That's, That's not a point of right. order. It's not, it has nothing to do with the order of this hearing. Thank you. Uh, can I go back to four minutes and 34 seconds? That's where I was before I was interrupted by Mr. Raskin. Yes. Reset, reset the Thank clock. Thank you. Thank you. What is binding is the actual written document, the written language in the subpoena, because a subpoena from this committee is also signed off on by the clerk of the House. That is the binding document that matters here. That is what governs. That's number one. Number two that was said in this hearing. It was said that our witnesses said that there was no basis for an impeachment. But remember, members on the Democrat side of the aisle, what was said by Mr. Turley at the time was that there was plenty of evidence for the continuation of an impeachment inquiry. And the purpose of that hearing was the relevance basis for an impeachment inquiry. The House has now voted for an impeachment inquiry. And one of the first things that the House did after the vote of an impeachment inquiry was to subpoena Hunter Biden to appear. Hunter Biden is, 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 has evaded that subpoena. So flagrantly did he evade it that he decided to show up at the Senate side to give a press conference, and Eric Swalwell, a member of the House, helped him get that time on the Senate side to give a press conference. That's a flagrant violation of a congressional subpoena. Secondarily, he has the gall to show up here when we're actually discussing contempt. And he didn't stay. He was sitting right over there. He's not here now. He said he wants to talk. He could have stayed through the whole proceeding. He chose to leave. That's his business. But he was subpoenaed to come here. Back in December, he chose not to of his own volition. He's in violation of that subpoena, a subpoena that was executed with the signature of the clerk of the House of Representatives. That is the document that is binding. That's what we work off of. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I actually want to submit for the record an article from The Hill written by jo Jonathan Turley, and it is titled Eric Swalwell and the Politics of Contempt. With that objection, so ordered. Thank you. I'm glad something got admitted to the record. 
Last, a uh, couple other points. One quick point I want to make, and this is in reference to the minorities' uh, report about this $7.8 uh, million. I want the minorities to understand one very important distinction between President Biden and President Trump. President Trump has an international real estate portfolio that he has amassed over decades. I'm quite sure if you go back through all of the hotel receipts before he was president of the United States, that you had foreign dignitaries staying at Trump hotels all across the, all across the world. Will the gentleman yield? I'm not gonna yield, Mr. Raskin, I'm making a point. Because they're actually very nice hotels. They look good. People like staying there. Um, he, president he, Trump was not running the Trump Organization when he was president of the United States. To my recollection, Eric Trump, the president's son, was actually running the Trump Organization when President Trump was president of the United States. So if he had a portfolio of hotels and people choose, you know, through Expedia, through Kayak, through Hotels.com, if they choose to go and stay there, how is that the president being in violation of what the emoluments cause? That's what you're citing? Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, America, this is ridiculous. The Biden family has no business. They've never had a business except for politics. And the one thing that the Oversight Committee, in conjunction with the Ways and Means Committee and in conjunction with the Judiciary Committee, has always been able to demonstrate is that they shook down foreign nations for millions, millions, 26 million at the latest count, and growing, millions. And there was never any business entity involved except public corruption and a pay-for-play scheme. The House Oversight Committee would like to get to the bottom of this under the impeachment inquiry of the House. We have questions for Hunter Biden. We issued a subpoena for him to answer said questions. He ignored a congressional subpoena as a private citizen. There are many attorneys on the other side of the aisle. If you had one of your clients in your private practice ignore a congressional subpoena as a private citizen, you would advise them not to because they would be held in contempt and they would actually be punished by the Department of Justice. So I find it interesting well, to see today. Yield so I I'm can not going to yield, Mr. Goldman, because I had a question for you earlier. You didn't want to take my question, so I'm not going to take yours. Thank you. So in closing, I will say private citizens, yes, they have a responsibility to answer congressional subpoenas. They do. Hunter Biden had it, and he was flagrant. He decided to give a press conference. So we're going to do this business, and he should be held in contempt by the full House of Representatives. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Chair now recognize Ms. Norton from Washington, D.C. for five minutes. I, I, I yield my, I, my five minutes to Mr. Raskin. I would like to thank the distinguished delegate from the District of Columbia, and I need to correct the record because of several false statements made about the Foreign Emoluments Clause, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8, although I do... Uh, appreciate the gentleman from Florida's attempt to at least engage on the matter of substance that uh, was raised so powerfully by Ms. Crockett. Now let's start with this. Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 says that the, neither the President nor any member of Congress can receive a present in emolument, which means a payment, an office or a title from a prince, a king, a foreign government, quote, Mr. Donald, of any kind whatever of any kind, whatever, without going to Congress first and obtaining the consent of Congress. There's no hotel exception, Mr. Donald, to the Foreign Emoluments Clause. There's no international real estate syndicate exception to the Foreign Emoluments Clause, Mr. Donald. And also, I, I will take you up on your challenge to see whether uh, the Trump Hotel in Washington, the Trump Hotel in Las Vegas, the Trump Hotel on Fifth Avenue, the Trump Hotel at UN Plaza, the four of the more than 500 businesses that we got documentation for, whether they actually had the same level of business coming from Saudi Arabia, the communist bureaucrats of China, who were the leading spender, as you know, if you've read our report, the United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, India, Egypt and so on. I, I will, we will make that comparison about what was done before. If you get the chairman to call off the ban on further documents coming from Mazar. So Have you ever stayed at a Trump hotel, Mr. Ex Rassi? Excuse no, and I would, never would stay at a Trump hotel. I've got too much self-respect and stay concern at bad for hotels. hygiene. So, but in any event, uh, Mr. Donald, you're totally wrong about what the Foreign Emoluments Clause stands for. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was given two elephant tusks by the King of Siam during the Civil War, and he liked them very much. He wanted to keep them, but he went to Congress. 
which is what every other president did before and every president did since, right up until Donald Trump. And he asked whether he could keep the tusks in Congress, though they loved Honest Abe, said, no, you can't keep them. I mean, John F. Kennedy was, was uh, offered citizenship by the people of Ireland because they loved him so much, and he refused to take it, saying that even though it didn't violate the letter of the Monuments Clause, it violated the spirit of the Monuments Clause. And Donald Trump converted the presidency into an instrument for self-enrichment. He raked in millions of dollars from the most corrupt governments on Earth who came in with specific favor favors that we document in our report that they got from Donald Trump. I beseech my colleagues, I will read any book, any magazine, any speech you've given that you want me to read, read this report and come back and tell me if you think Donald Trump did the right thing in converting the White House into a for-profit operation. No other president in American history has come anywhere close. And you ask why he's so determined to stay in office that he would unleash violence against his own vice president, the brother of your colleague, of our colleague. Why would he do that? It's because it was a money-making operation, and it was, a, it was a great business grift for a guy who went bankrupt several times. And yet, out of some misguided partisan loyalty, you're going to stick with him. I don't even know why you stick with him. He was a Democrat longer than he was a Republican. He wanted to run for president on the Reform Party. You guys have been taken over by an absolute con man, and now you're acting like members of a religious cult who don't even remember how you got in in the first place. We say return the profits, Donald Trump, $7.8 million. I've got a letter, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to share with you telling Donald Trump to return these $7.8 million. It's a small fraction of what he raked in. We want to know about the other two years in office. We want to know about uh, the other businesses, not just those four that we were able to get information on. And we want to know about every country on earth, not just the 20 uh, autocracies and dictatorships that we found. This is our government. This is our Constitution. And we're going to stand up for it against Donald Trump and anybody who follows him to the path of oblivion. Abraham Lincoln started your party as a third party to replace the Whigs because they wouldn't take a moral stand against slavery. It was a pro-freedom, anti-slavery, pro-union, pro-honesty party. And your party has been reduced to a corrupt authoritarian cult of personality, and everybody does whatever Donald Trump tells them to do, which is what we're doing here today with this stupid attempt to hold Hunter Biden in contempt when he has come forward to say he will testify and give you everything you want as the chairman of the committee repeatedly offered in public. So forgive my outrage and indignation, but enough is enough. Let's get back to the business of the people, as Ms. Brown said. Mr. Higgins for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 